Welcome to the first ever video on my review series. I decided to start with Minecraft because it has been an all-time favorite game of mine and it still is. In all of the review videos, you will see me go into 12 different sections of the game. From the graphics to the gameplay, I hope you guys enjoy the first ever review on my review series. Please comment below what game you want to see reviewed next. Anyways, enjoy. Graphics Minecraft's graphics are very unique. They are probably the best looking pixel art textures I have ever seen. When the textures changed in 1.14, I was really surprised with how good they look, seeing as how they're a 16x16 16 texture. And with the new 1.17 update coming out, and retexturing almost all of the ores, and bringing in new textures, Minecraft once again does a really outstanding job with the textures. In my opinion, I really love the new retextures of the ores. What Minecraft also does really well is a good job of mixing 2D and 3D together. What I mean by this is some of their blocks, such as flowers, cobweb, or even the new upcoming dripstone, are all 2D textures just in an X shape. These blend in really well with the 3D environment. Overall, really good textures. I wouldn't be surprised if they got even better in the future. With the addition of resource packs allowing you to remodel and retexture anything you'd like in the game, this allows players to get very creative with how they want the game to look and feel. Resource packs resolution can go as high as 4096 by 4096 Combine one of these ultra high resolution resource packs with some ray tracing shaders made by players, and you get a very detailed and beautiful looking version of Minecraft. But yeah, that's about it for the graphics, let's move on to the next section. Gameplay Minecraft is a sandbox game with randomly generated and fully destructible worlds. This allows you to build and destroy anything you want. You can play on a server with a lot of people, or you can play alone in single player. Or you can make a private server with only a handful of people. Minecraft consists of three game modes, survival, creative, and hardcore. In survival, the main goal is to survive, build, explore, and have fun. But also, an optional goal in survival is to defeat the Ender Dragon and the Wither. In creative, you can do anything you'd like. You have unlimited resources and cannot die. You also have admin commands. Creative is mostly used for building to your heart's content. And lastly, hardcore is just like survival, but the twist is it's locked on hard difficulty and you only have one life, meaning you cannot respawn. When you die in hardcore, you die forever. You may delete the world after you're done, or you're permanently put into spectator mode to view your world. Like with most games, speedrunning is a big part of Minecraft. Players keep finding more efficient ways to beat the game. Minecraft SMPs have also become a big part of Minecraft. SMPs are a way for a group of players to all play Minecraft together. All SMPs are unique. Some are just playing survival, some have mods, some have plugins, and some even feature roleplay. Minecraft has really evolved over time from being a sandbox game and now becoming an open-ended creative tool that players can use to build pretty much anything on their minds, while of course still being a sandbox game. Anyways, that's about it for this section, let's move on to the next one. Audio Minecraft contains many music tracks, which play at many points in the game, including the main menu, in creative and survival mode, in the nether and the end, and during the credits. The music has always fit the game very well. Even the modern Minecraft music still gives off Minecraft feelings. Minecraft also features cave sounds, mob sounds, and block sounds. But the music has always been the highlight of Minecraft's audio for me. There are also many music discs in Minecraft. While many people won't like all of them, there is definitely a pick for everyone. In the 1.16 update, the Nether received new music. In my opinion, it really fits the dark and scary feeling of the Nether. Minecraft also seems to be looking into adding new block sounds. For example, in the new upcoming 1.17 update, a lot of the new blocks have very unique sounds that have never been heard before. Overall, Minecraft has come a long way with their audio. Their audio has become more modern while still retaining the Minecraft feeling. I can't wait to see what Minecraft does next with their audio. That's it for the audio, let's move on to the audience. Audience.
Minecraft from the start was a kid's game, primarily targeted towards 5 to 15 year olds on release. But now, modern Minecraft seems to capture everyone's attention. In 2019, the average age of Minecraft players was 24. I wouldn't call Minecraft a child's game or a kid's game nowadays, as many kids and teens grew up with the game and now are much older. While some may have quit, maybe because they got bored or maybe because they grew out of it, some of the people they grew up with it stayed. Minecraft is still popular too, while it's not at its golden age of 2013. It's still having over 126 million people play Minecraft monthly. I don't see this number dropping unless some of the older players move on to have a family or just lose free time. The updates that are being put out every year keep Minecraft fresh and up to date, meaning more people will stay and play the game, and more people will buy the game and play the game. Personally, for me, I will definitely be sticking around for a few years and seeing what Minecraft turns into. Overall, this game is for everyone. Don't be disappointed that you played this game and may be older, because Minecraft in the end is a great game for everyone to play. Requirements From what I've experienced, Minecraft does not need a powerful PC or laptop to be run with decent FPS. I actually used to play Minecraft on a pretty low-end laptop and got a solid 60 FPS. Keep in mind that the upcoming cave update has a lot of performance issues right now, due to the increased world height and depth. They will most likely optimize this before release. On screen I'll show off the minimum requirements and the recommended requirements. For the minimum requirements, you will need an Intel i3 or an AMD A8 or equivalent, 4GB of RAM or more, a NVIDIA GeForce 400 series or AMD Radeon HT 7000 series with OpenGL 4.4, at least 1GB of storage, Windows 10, Mac OS, or Linux as your operating system, 64-bit is recommended. For the recommended requirements, you will need an Intel i5 or an AMD A10 or equivalent, 8GB of RAM or more, a NVIDIA GeForce 700 series, or an AMD Radeon RX 200 series with OpenGL 4.5. At least 4GB of storage on a hard drive, but a solid state drive is recommended. And lastly, Windows 10, Mac OS, or Linux as your operating system. 64-bit is recommended. Internet connectivity is required for downloading Minecraft files. Afterwards, offline play is possible. If you aren't big on the tech side of computers, well, the short story is, you don't need an expensive gaming setup for Minecraft. You really only need a modern laptop. Anyways, that's it for the requirements. Now, let's move on to the next section. Difficulty The difficulty of Minecraft is really up to you. There are four different difficulties in the game. Peaceful is where no hostile mobs spawn and your hunger will never drop. The only hostile mobs that will spawn in Peaceful are Shulkers, Hoglins, Piglins, and the Ender Dragon. In Easy Mode, hostile mobs spawn, but they deal the least damage out of all of the difficulties. The Hunger Bar can deplete and will damage the player if empty. Cave Spouters and Bees cannot poison the players on Easy Difficulty, and the Wither does not cause Wither Effect, although Wither Skeletons do. Zombies do not break down doors and do not turn villagers into zombie villagers. In normal mode, hostile mobs spawn and deal a standard amount of damage. Just like in easy mode, the hunger bar can deplete and will damage the player if empty, and zombies will not break down doors. Lastly in hard mode, hostile mobs will deal the most damage out of all of the difficulties, and the hunger bar can deplete and will completely kill the player if empty. Zombies can break down doors, and spiders can spawn with beneficial status effects, such as speed, strength, regeneration, and invisibility. The last thing I want to talk about is Hardcore Mode. While this isn't a difficulty, it's a game mode that locks the difficulty on hard and limits you to one life, meaning no respawns. Once you die, your world is set in spectator, or you can delete the world if you wish. Grind The Minecraft grind isn't too hard once you play for a little while. You start by chopping down trees and progressing your way through wooden tools all the way to diamond tools. You can even upgrade your diamond tools into netherite tools, but it's not needed. The Minecraft grind is pretty simple if you think about it. Beating Minecraft is when you enter the end by finding and activating the end portal found in a stronghold, and then you go and kill the ender dragon, which is considered Minecraft's main boss. 
Additionally, you can spawn on the Wither with 3 Wither Skulls and 4 Soul Sand. Killing it will give you another star. You can craft a beacon out of it and stack it on a pyramid of ore blocks, such as Iron, Diamond, Emerald, Gold, or even Netherite if you want to flex. The beacon will give you helpful status effects, emit light, and help you find your way home. Overall, the grind in Minecraft is pretty simple. It's just a tier of crafting tools, armor, and weapons. Plus a lot of exploring, killing, looting, and possibly trading. Story Minecraft does not have an official story, unless we are talking about the Telltale Minecraft game that is called Minecraft Story Mode, but in this case we're talking about Minecraft itself. While there are theories about Minecraft story, such as Game Theory's many videos discussing Minecraft lore, in the end, these are just theories and not officially canon in the Minecraft universe. You can technically come up with some story of your own about your world, which is kind of the charm of the game. You are free to come up with your own story or plot. Another thing you could do is roleplay. You could do it with a group of friends or you could join some roleplay server. It could be scripted or it could be made up as you go. The Dream SMP is a pretty good and popular example of Minecraft roleplay. Minecraft having no story allows the players to get even more creative in the game by not only just building structures, but actually building their own story too. Game Time The game time is really up to you as a player. You can beat the game as fast as possible, such as speedrunning, or you could have a survival world for a few days, weeks, months, or even years. If you are interested in speedrunning, then go ahead and try your best to beat the game as fast as you can. If you like casual playthroughs, maybe have a survival or a hardcore world that lasts a few days or weeks. And finally, if you like more of a challenge, then start a hardcore world and try to last a few months or even years. In the end, you don't need to follow any of these. You can create your own time length of your Minecraft world or server. If you are just starting off though, maybe try out normal difficulty on survival mode and play through it casually. Price. The price tag of $26.95 is a good deal for a game that gives you yearly updates for free and user created skins, mods, maps, resource packs, and servers. You can even create all of these yourself. Java Edition does not feature any in-game currency and also does not feature an item shop to purchase cosmetics, unlike Bedrock Edition and I hope Java never gets anything like that. I also think this price tag is good because you get to play all of the older versions, snapshots, and April Fool versions of Minecraft. You can even go as far as downloading official versions that are not on the launcher and play them through the launcher. In the end, I think it's a great price tag because you get all of this content out of one single game. Bugs. There have been many bugs that have been found and patched in Minecraft's history. Usually Minecraft comes with a couple of bugs each update, and they are later patched in a smaller update. But as Minecraft's updates keep getting more complicated and bigger, I'm guessing it'll bring more bigger bugs. But they have also gotten really good at updating their game and reducing the amount of bugs. In Minecraft's past, there were some bugs allowing players to duplicate items. In the present, duping bugs have seemed to have been patched, or at least near impossible to pull off. There are many other major bugs in Minecraft's past, such as world generation bugs and lighting engine bugs, but overall, Minecraft is a very polished game and receives a lot of support and quick action if a bug is found. Overall Overall, Minecraft is a great game that I'll probably be playing for a lot longer. It's more than just a game, now it's a tool that allows people to build whatever they want. You can create anything, whether it be a building of some sort, a resource pack, an adventure map, a server, a mod, or even an entirely different game in Minecraft itself. You can play with friends or family, or join a random server, you can play mini games, or play alone. There's so much to do in Minecraft, and that's why the game is still alive to this day. It features updates every year that seem to get bigger and better. You can choose from four different difficulties and three different game modes. 
Minecraft features just above 1,000 items and 80 mobs. You can get all this for the price tag of $26.95, a great price tag for a great game, with no DLC, item shop, or in-game currency besides in servers such as Hypixel or Mindplex. I really recommend this game if you love survival sandbox games that feature a lot more than just a survival sandbox game. Thank you everybody for watching my Minecraft review to the very end. I hope you all enjoyed the first review video on my new review series. My next review may take a while to come out as I need to find a game that I can review in depth. If you guys have any suggestions on what game I should review next, please leave a comment below. Once again, I hope you enjoyed. Please consider subscribing as I am very close to 200 subscribers. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.